Welcome back to Rotary in the southwest of England. This is where we highlight what Rotary International is doing for communities at home and abroad. So what is Rotary? Rotarians are just ordinary people who are prepared to go out of their way to help others. But when they work together under the Rotary banner, those ordinary people achieve extraordinary things. Rotarians change lives, save lives and give hope. In this program, we're bringing you features on how some amazing young people are changing lives. We also visit a very special place where we are unable to save lives or give hope. Following the recent earthquakes in Nepal, we talk with a Rotarian who has worked there and is looking to the future. We also talk to another who is saving thousands of lives in Tanzania. Recently, I met up with Rotary International's new district governor for Devon and Cornwall, Brian Stoyle. Brian, you've just become the Rotary District Governor for the new district covering the two counties of Devon and Cornwall. Previous to that, you've been District Governor for Cornwall and West Devon, and following that, you were President of all Rotary in Great Britain and Ireland. You've been greatly involved in strengthening Rotary across the world. And in today's society, is there a need for an organisation such as Rotary? Sadly, I do think there's a need for Rotary today, even more than ever. There's so many more challenges out there which we really can help with, not only abroad, but here closely at home as well. So, yes, Rotary is, is badly needed and we are there to help wherever it's needed. After almost 35 years in Rotary, what do you consider to be the most satisfying achievements or differences that you have been able to make within communities at home and abroad? I believe it was the first time I was district governor. Just previously, the um, Children's Hospice Southwest was just a figment of Jill and Eddie Farrell's um, imagination. But we got together, and together with Rotary, Rotary in Devon and Cornwall, we achieved the impossible by setting it all up. And that was some 25 years ago. And here we are now celebrating another children's hospice at Little Harbour. So I'd, I'd like to say that is a very that's a big highlight of my Rotary career and also the malaria campaign which I founded because of my work in Africa. Uh, those are the two highlights I think um, which really are very strong with me. It is not an understatement to say that you are one of the most experienced Rotarians in Rotary International. What do you consider to be Rotary's greatest achievement? Rotary's greatest achievement hasn't been achieved yet because as you know for the last 25 years We've been working to eliminate polio. If we can do that, that is going to be our greatest achievement. Yes, we have done a lot of work with hunger, health, everything like that, but truly polio is going to be the biggest achievement ever. It is close now to, to being achieved. Polio is only found in two countries, Afghanistan and Pakistan, which is war-torn strife there, and that is the biggest handicap. If we can overcome that, then we will achieve the impossible. So that is going to be Rotary's biggest achievement. Some perceive Rotary as an elitist fundraising organisation. Would you agree? No, it is not. We do have the high CEOs of companies. We do have the top echelons of managers. But we also have the carers who are looking after their parents. We also have the nursing staff. We have teachers. We have everybody. If you want to give something back to your community, then Rotary is the vehicle for you to do that. Brian, we thank you for the difference you are making to Rotary and to communities at home and abroad. Within Rotary, we do a vast amount of work with young people around the world, helping them develop and reach their potential. I would like to introduce you to two remarkable youngsters who live by the Rotary motto, Service Above Self. They've been awarded the title of Rotary Citizen of the Year and the ceremony was broadcast on BBC News. Well, I'm here now with Alid and we're going to have a little chat about him winning a Rotary Young Citizens Award. Hi. Hi, Alid. Look at these. Wonderful trophy. Where did you have to go to get these? I had to go to Belfast in Ireland, of course. Did you get to meet the rest of the, the winners? Yeah, I met loads. Well, six, of, yeah, six or seven others. But they were really nice. Were they? I made some good friends there. Oh, that's brilliant. And what was the best bit of it? Well, it was just to me making the friends and actually getting the awards. What would you? What else would you like to do well, in your role? When I'm older, way older, I want to be um, go to Cambridge University and study psychology. 
it's been great talking to you. Thank you. We're now just going to share with some of the viewers um, some of the film that was done by BBC Spotlight. Yes, Spotlight. As a result of you uh, um, receiving this award. Thank you. So well done again. Thank you. Now an inspirational story of courage and bravery about an 11-year-old boy from Devon who's one of the winners in the Rotary Young Citizens Award. Yes, born in Plimstock with heart, bowel and kidney problems, Alad Griffiths has endured 12 major operations including open heart surgery. He's receiving the award in recognition of his work, inspiring others with the condition and the medical staff who work with them. Ed Goodridge reports. Ready about? Ready. ho! 11-year-old Alad Griffiths from Plimstock has been in and out of hospital since birth. He's had 12 operations, but sailed through them all. I can see the two bushes again. Now he's telling others about his experiences. I have that type of sensation. And taking it all in his stride, speaking in front of 600 people at this medical conference. Alad was born with heart and bowel problems, a curved spine and missing fingers. He admits life has been hard, but he's determined to help others. But no matter what, you need to be determined to do what you put your mind to. And just tell, give examples about how I've gone through a lot of things and come out in the good end. It's this inspirational work that has led Alid to be one of five winners in the Rotary Young Citizen Awards. Yeah, it was amazing when I was told. I was in tears because of how hard it was to get and... It was just amazing getting it. Well, tonight we hear about a winning university student from Plymouth. Yes, 19-year-old Kat Goodsell became a senior ambassador for Her Majesty's School Heroes. Her award recognises her work helping children whose parents are in the armed services. Spotlight's Carol Madge has her story. It's no surprise that Kat Goodsell has been given the Young Citizen Award. The 19-year-old student from Plymouth University has a lifetime of achievements. Just before I started my GCSEs, I helped out at Downham School, which was for disabled children. And ever since I worked there, I wanted to help more children. And it's actually not all been about disabled children. I've helped service children. And for my, in my GCSEs, I fundraised about £4,000 and went out to India and built a nursery school for the children out there. Saying goodbye doesn't get any easier. Kat's been recognised for making this special short film. I worked with HMS Heroes, um, which is about helping service children while they're at school and helping them to deal with when mum or dad is away. And I acted as a senior ambassador. I made a film um, to help the teachers in schools um, kind of understand what a child will go through. At school, some teachers don't understand what I have to deal with at home. It's now being used as a teacher resource in schools across the country and I've travelled across the country and I might be going abroad to introduce it to British colonies out in the likes of Germany. Kat has first-hand experience of this uncertain lifestyle. Her dad was in the Navy and was often away from home. We needed to do something that would really make a difference. So we came up with the idea with the help of a charity called Fixers. Um, they helped us to make the film, they lent us the camera equipment and everything like that. But I'm so proud of what my dad does. I love having him home so we can be a family again. Well, we've just seen the footage from BBC Spotlight Southwest, and here with me now to give us a few pointers on her visit to Belfast is Kat. What do you think is going to be the most important thing to take away? Now you've won this award, um, how do you see yourself going forward? I think that the award has brought a lot of awareness to what I've been doing and what I'm still doing and I think that's the most important thing and I hope that the awareness that this award has brought is what's going to help me in the future whether it's with this particular charity or other charities besides. And is that what you're going to do as a, a profession within, within charities uh, or...? I, yes, I, I haven't really thought about it. I'm still at university at the moment. I like helping others, that's what I like doing best, so I can see a future that might 
you know, include charity work in the future. And maybe joining Rotary because that's what we do. <laughs> Possibly, yes. Yes, I've been invited several times. <laughs> well, we are delighted that you've just taken time out to come and speak to us today that's and right. tell us a little bit about your experience in going to Belfast. And we wish you all the best for the future in whatever you decide to do. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. Earlier, we heard how Rotary has been involved with the development of children's hospices in the southwest. Recently, we paid a visit to Little Harbour Hospice near St Austell, where the staff give desperate support, dignity and treasured memories for troubled families living with life-limited youngsters. It's really good coming here. I mean, we get other short breaks, but when we come here, we can come and stay here as well. Whereas other short breaks takes William away from us. Whereas the really good thing about here is that we can, yeah, they'll, they'll take him and take him out on trips or they'll do things with him in the building and we can sit out here or we can do things together like we were this afternoon on the swing. So, and you don't get time to do those sort of things day to day at home. And if they're on another short break, again, you don't get to do things with your child because all the services that are normally there are taking your child from you or coming to your house and sending you out sort of thing. So this is like a complete break for you all away from home. Yeah. Little Harbour are currently supporting over 90 families. Some of those are bereaved families from when we first opened. We are also currently supporting over 130 siblings. So as you can imagine, that keeps our sibling team extremely busy. Yeah, it keeps the, house, keeps the place very full, I should think, as It well. keeps it very child-friendly. <laughs> That's excellent. It feels lovely in there. We offer a real individual bespoke package of care to families. So we always say to families, we're here to support them in the way that best meets their needs. So for some families, they may wish to choose and use us as a respite facility where they might bring their child and it might give them time to go home and spend time with the other siblings. Alternatively they tend to come as a whole family and the one unique thing that we can offer is that we can provide support to the whole family. For some families perhaps they've never been away on holiday um, and they actually might come and trust us to look after their child while they go abroad. You do build, do build up a, a relationship with the, the staff and, and at the end of the day they're staff but I couldn't do what they're doing. I was saying earlier actually, even though I have William, sometimes I find it really hard to think of things to do with him, to stimulate him. And I just think they're so brilliant. They're very inventive, aren't they? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm an activities coordinator, which means I make sure that all the activities are going on that are suitable for children in-house. Uh, we go out of house, we have activities going on in-house and we have people come in. So my role is to arrange all of that, as well as seeing to the children and making sure they've got individual activities that will suit their abilities as well. Beside you, you've got some of the party boxes that you, you've made up with uh, some of the money that was, uh, was raised by the Rotary Clubs. We had a, an email discussion and you thought that this would be um, a nice idea for us to have. Would you like to explain that? Absolutely. Some of the children come in and we ask them what their wishes are for the children that have communication. And some of the parents actually request that, oh, it's a third birthday party, it's a tenth birthday party. Could we have something around the Gruffalo or my child really likes pirates. And a lot of the children absolutely adore the pirate theme as well. Grab the box, set up the party and the children have fun, which is our aim to make sure the children have treasured memories and the parents as well to have treasured memories of lovely happy things going on a special yes. day. Yes, yes that's right. Uh, as soon as we get here you can feel the weight of everything sort of falling away from you. And that is amazing. Yeah, amazing. yeah, no it is. It's, um, it's, 
yeah, it's, it's a funny position to be in really, to actually be plunged into a lifestyle where you're actually going to somewhere to have a break. When I tell people <laughs> we had a fridge man in the other day and I was saying to him, oh you can't do it next week because we're at the hospice. And he was, oh I'm sorry. And I went, well actually, <laughs> I said we're going there for a break. <laughs> it's the only place we've been on holiday for about the last eight years. <laughs> After the break, we will be learning more about malaria in Tanzania and how Rotary is assisting the recovery in Nepal. See you soon. Hi, it's me again. I hope you're enjoying the program. Companies are increasingly working with Rotary knowing that we can help deliver their corporate social responsibility. You know that doing good is good for business. Rotary started as a philanthropic organisation for business people with a social conscience. Since then, that has been our business, doing good in the communities you do business in. But there is more to it than that. There is the personal development, the personal well-being and the feel-good factor that goes with making a difference to others, changing lives, saving lives and giving hope. There are many, many ways that your company could work with us. For example, you could allow us to continue broadcasting this program by taking an advert here. With 1.2 million Rotarians around the world and 50,000 across the British Isles, think of the potential. If your business is interested in working with the world's largest voluntary service organisation, then please contact us. Welcome back. Malaria kills 3,000 people every day in sub-Saharan Africa. Let's see what Rotary is doing about it. Brian, one of your passions in Rotary is eliminating malaria in Tanzania. Why is that? It came about because I was taking school children and then later Rotaractors on overseas trips to improve health centres, to build school classrooms and things like that. And we were finding that a lot of our workforce were going ill and it all stemmed from malaria. And then we found that some of our workforce were not attending that day because they had to attend to a funeral. And you find out that their relatives are dying from malaria. And I thought, yes, why not? I should try to help these people. Okay, so you had this idea and you just went for it? Spent a lot of time with the local people, local medical health people in Tanzania, find out what they wanted. Then I came back to the UK, spoke to the health centers over here, Institute of Tropical Medicine and said what's the best way that we can help and to a man both here and in Tanzania they said supply bed nets that's the most important thing to keep people alive. Was it very difficult getting people to use the nets Brian? Very that's a very good question because we we have our rotor actors there who help us with the projects and in the early stages they actually went into the houses and we're talking not of houses as we know them, but mud huts with wooden rafters and things like that. And they were putting up the nets. They were hammering nails in the top or tying the nets around the beams, making sure that the people knew that they, by keeping them under the bed, they didn't keep mosquitoes out the way. So we had to hang them up for them. It caught on very, very quickly once they knew what they had to do. Could you let us have a bit of an idea of what some of the symptoms are? Yes, it's really just a question of how do you feel when you get the flu? You feel a bit drowsy, you feel nausea, you feel just generally worn down. And that's really what malaria is all about. That also is, a, is an offshoot really of problems because yes, they also get types of flu. And if we're not careful, we may treat a flu type symptom and not malaria. So we have to be careful that we treat the same thing. And once it's in the bloodstream, it keeps on recurring. So although you might get it this year, three years time, you could still get malaria then. It keeps on coming back. How do you get the work done out in Tanzania? The family of Rotary. Ladies of Inner Wheel, Rotaract, the 18 to 30 year olds, Interact, the ones 12 to 18, and the Rotarians, of course. They're very, very important because they are the ones that make sure that everything's going on. Have you seen much success over 12 years? The incidence of malaria in our villages that we've been working in has been reduced by 
So that is, that is tremendous. Bearing in mind that 3,000 people die every day in sub-Saharan Africa through malaria. So 64% saving on that is good. Our idea, of course, in the future, long term, is to have this vaccine. How long it's going to take, we don't know. Tests are going on throughout the world at present, and very successful tests. But Bill Gates has gone on record to say that malaria can be beaten. And with his help in the funding of the vaccine, I'm sure it will be beaten. So that's our long term. We, we should keep on supplying bed nets until that vaccine comes along. And of course, the other important factor is now that a bed net produced in Arusha by local workers, 24 hour day production, World Health Organization standards, only costs us £2.50 per net. So that's a great saving of lives just for £2.50. So what does, is involved in the package or the programme that you deliver? The package altogether is residual house spraying, spraying the interior of houses with insecticide, clearing swampy areas, the breeding sites for, for mosquitoes, the planting of mosquito repellent trees. All these things are very important to, to, keep, to keep the mosquitoes at bay. And then of course we have the education, which is again the key factor of the whole, the whole issue. But it, it all comes together. You can't do one thing without everything else. Let's now travel to Nepal, where there are strong links with Rotary here in the southwest. Rotarian Peter Reed of the Plimpton Rotary Club tells us more. So how did you personally get involved with Nepal? Uh, when my wife and I were teachers and when we retired, uh, we applied to VSO and she said, oh, we could, they could send us anywhere, we, I might never get to Nepal and it was our third offer, Kathmandu. As a Rotarian, how did you get involved in Nepal? I've been a, I've been a member of Rotary, I, I like that it's Rotary International. Um, that means you can walk into a club anywhere in the world, but even better for us, I was able to transfer my membership to a Rotary Club in Nepal. And how did you develop links between the Southwest Peninsula and, and Nepal? Uh, Nepal became its own district the year that we left. I spoke to the man in our club, in my club in Nepal, who, and he was going to be the new DG. And I said, meet up with the DG from, uh, from Plymouth and Cornwall and arranged to do a group study exchange. And, and a and group study exchange happened. It happened Fantastic. from that. And four young people from here travelled to Nepal and spent four weeks living there and five young Nepalis came here with a very distinguished Rotarian. And that led to a project, didn't it? It led to a, a very good water project in the mountains where women will be saved a terrible ordeal of carrying water up for animals and washing and cooking and everything. A water project will actually pump the water to their village and save them that, that, that manual labour. And shelter box has always been important to you as well. Before I went to Nepal, and the two things that give me the biggest bu bu buzz about Rotary are polio and shelterbox. But in February this year, I actually spoke at their district conference in Nepal. 700 Rotarians from all over the country, and I did 10 minutes on shelterbox. And I mentioned Haiti and capital city and an earthquake, and you didn't need to say that twice in Nepal. They made the connection. And it's only a few weeks later the terrible earthquake just, happened. Just seven weeks after my presentation. and. Uh, the terrible earthquake happened and Nicola, my friend, who had already been in Nepal doing an evaluation for shelter box, was called again to be there when the boxes started arriving and uh, she, she spent time connecting up with the Rotarians that I'd introduced her to. And it's gone beyond that in the southwest, hasn't it? Not just shelter box, but all sorts of other things have been so happening. Because of the group study exchange, there's a huge softness for Nepal. A, a, a lot of people, Facebook friends, Nepali Facebook friends with friends in the southwest, friends in, in, in our district, our new district, and, and when they went looking for help from the clubs, they, they, they suggested, David Jones suggested, each club give £100. That would have raised 3900 and they got over 20000 <laughs> And that went straight to the Rotary District, 3292, the district which is Nepal, 85 clubs. An amazing district. And since the terrible earthquake, of course, you, be, you and other Rotarians have been getting involved with all sorts of other initiatives in the southwest. I've, I'm bringing a, a group of people together very shortly to set up a Plymouth-Nepal partnership. Nepal is starting to drop from the headlines. I read yesterday that uh, 
that Kathmandu has had 322 aftershocks. Oh goodness, and you feel that it's being forgotten? It runs the risk of being forgotten, but that's what our partnership is to is to counter. We want to keep it high profile and come up with some events right through to next April. We want a, next April we want a series of events called One Year On. And presumably it's not just about raising money, there's an, an, an awareness, but right. there's also things that we can actually uh, help out there in other ways. There? Raising money, raising awareness, but also giving people some idea of what it's actually like in Nepal. There are people saying, oh, but I can't go to Nepal as a, as a tourist or as a trekker because it's all destroyed. No, it isn't destroyed. 98% of the buildings in Kathmandu are still standing. There, there are lots of things that people could do, but we need to resuscitate their readiness to travel and trek in Nepal. Nepal is working, Nepal is getting back on its feet and it just needs people over in the UK and around the world to say well now is the time to visit. And now for a roundup of Rotary News. Are you sitting comfortably? Once upon a time, there was a single word that struck fear in the hearts of parents around the world. Polio. Since the 1980s, Rotary has been fighting this dreadful disease. When we started, 350,000 cases were being reported each year across 180 countries. So far this year, there have been only 27 reported in Afghanistan and Pakistan. As a result, 7 million children have not contracted polio. For this, children and parents around the world should be grateful to Rotary and our partners. We really are this close to eradicating polio. In the southwest of England, some of our Olympic and world champions have signed up to helping Rotary to end polio. These include rower Helen Glover, swimmer Ruto Metatui, and diver Tonya Kuch. Rotary in the Southwest has stepped in as the headline sponsor to save the Devon Youth Games, which attracts 1,000 youngsters. We run a wide variety of competitions in schools that help to strengthen and enhance the curriculum. The Rotary Young Chef competition is now being extended into special schools. Here we see the students at Doubletree School busy in the kitchen. Thanks must go to Brend Hotels and Tesco who have supported the event. Rotary clubs in schools are becoming more popular. Road to Kids for Junior Schools and Interact for Secondary Schools. Harwin Hazelden of Bodmin School explains why she got involved. I was quite convinced by the assemblies we had about it. It seemed like a really fun thing to do. Um, and when I started coming, it was really great because we um, talked about helping other people, not only just in the school, but um, in the country and in other places in the world. And I thought that was a really great thing to help other people. Ten-year-old Madison Glinsky was recently recognised by Rotary in the Southwest as a Young Citizen of the Year. Madison busked her way to raising over £40,000 for Children's Hospice Southwest. I feel really, really pleasured and really um, happy about receiving this award because these awards are what keeps me going and they really inspire me. A new Rotary e-club is being formed to tap into this global interest in the Southwest. We hope to attract new Rotarians from around the world who will meet online, a very powerful way for Rotarians from across the globe to meet and to make a difference. And finally, remember, Rotary stories have happy endings. Well, that brings us to an end of this programme. Please remember, Rotary's business is doing good in the community. Rotarians are just ordinary people, just like you, who are prepared to go out of their way to help others. But when they work together under the Rotary banner, those ordinary people achieve extraordinary things. Rotarians change lives, save lives and give hope. Now if that interests you, then please contact us.